I hereby call the meeting to order at eight o'clock on Monday, May 23rd. Uh, we have our agenda. Are there any additions to the agenda? No additions to the agenda. Are there any comments from the public? I don't see any members of the public in the meeting, either remotely or here. And therefore, let's move on to the first item on the agenda, the review of the revised quote for the 2022 Dodge Ram. So this is, I think, in light of you know the world today, um, the truck as we originally configured it is not exactly how it now is going to arrive. So the original quote was for $48,358. The revised pro quote is $51,953. So it's an additional $3,595. So this truck is scheduled to arrive. It's going to be here on June 4th. So we are essentially asking the select board to authorize the additional funds and then also authorize us to do a special warrant so that we can go ahead and have that check because mm -hmm. we want to be ready to get that truck when it gets here. Right, <laughs> right. Now, I didn't understand. Is there a difference in the way that the truck is configured? Yeah, there's some slight differences. We've been having trouble getting the, the, the specific details. So okay. Guthrie went over there today and at least got this. He's currently waiting for some additional specs from the... Uh, from the salesperson, he unfortunately was not in today. Okay. So we can get those details and follow up. But. Okay. Amy or John, do you have any questions or comments? No, I mean, we need a truck and we have to pay for it. There you go. <laughs> and the world is what it is right now. So. Yes, unfortunately it is. So. Jeffrey was actually looking just out of curiosity if there were any other options. And he was like, they just don't nope. expensive. So he was <laughs> right. We're actually sitting a little better where we are. You can't find anything on the lot because you're not really carrying anything anymore. Mm. <clears throat> so you can't. No, pretty much what's on the lot. You know, like, it's usually yeah, sold. Yeah, in the past, we'd be looking at truck and then you'd see it was too high, just go to another place, maybe you'd find one. Some places mm. wouldn't honor the state bid price. Uh huh. Because you always used to buy them up with the state bid price. Yeah. So, so I understand all that, and I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh, with buying a pig and a poke, basically, uh, since we don't know all the details about um, the changes that have been made. So I wonder if we could phrase a motion in a way that uh, gives us some wiggle room, like um, paying up to the 54, 425. Oh, yeah, so. the, yeah the, the 51, 953. Uh, um, no, retail price. Let me see. So I, let, let me get my right yeah, number here. Yeah, the retail is the 54, 425. Right. They're actually giving us what? a... That's okay. Very sad. Okay, so the fifty-one nine fifty-three. So I, I think a motion would be in order to pay up to fifty-one nine fifty-three, and to um, authorize a special warrant uh, pending approval of uh, the road foreman of the actual purchase. Yep. Uh, would Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, we are on the first item. We are doing the Dodge Ram, yep. and that's gone up in price. We aren't quite sure all the details why. So rather than giving a, a blanket approval to um, just pay the new price that we've been quoted, the motion is to pay up to the, the new revised cost of $51,953 and uh, to do that and authorize a special warrant pending Guthrie Perry's approval. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. So, so passed. And would you like to chair the meeting? Sure. Okay. Get to the next, well, next item. Thank mm -hmm. you for starting. Sorry I was late. Absolutely. In the field. Um, anyway, so item C discussion on Board of Auditors advisement to board on confidentiality confidentiality of delinquent tax information. Oh, so. So currently we post the yeah. letter from the treasurer of the delinquent taxes, yeah. including a detailed list yeah. of the delinquent taxes. And yeah. what is owed, um, how much is owed, individual yeah. names. So Deb provided some information um regarding some kind of precedent and, and just her opinion as well that we shouldn't be posting that level of detail um so i'm for how long essentially seeking like never no we've been doing it <laughs> no i know i'm just saying that um once you once you uh the state the state of Vermont for tax purposes 
they don't they don't post the person's name and everything until they file a lien with the town. Once they file a lien with the town, that's public information, so then it can become public. And I think in and I and, and Harvard, when we we did it, we would once we decided to go to tax sale, that's when you post the information about the about the property. Then you have a right to do it because it's going to be in the newspaper anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So what she what was she complaining about this beginning? Well, her her letter is on the website. You can I know I, I didn't know realize it was. Okay. So I did and I tried to read it, but you know that's what I got. I got one of those too, but then I was able to click somewhere off on the left and it opened. Well, I, I haven't seen the letter, but I know the previous discussion that we had a few years ago was she didn't like it because you could back she thought you could backtrack and get other information, but oh everyone, like social security numbers and stuff like that? No, but, really to calculate the person's income. Oh, and, and the, and the Supreme Court the did make a decision on that, that people can't be allowed to, to, to see the amount of the subsidy that people get due to, due to their income. Right, because then you could mm -hmm. maybe extrapolate yeah. the income. And we're not did, putting that. We're not putting that on. And yeah. I did read that today. Right. So, um, so that's not a factor because no. we're not posting that. Right, so I, then we're probably fine. So my we're memory of the history of this is that we never posted this stuff until COVID. That, oh no no we were posting it right along but Deb didn't like the fact that we were we were uh because i remember us getting it in the select board meetings and then being very discreet in the way we referred to things um referring to things by parcel number uh in our conversations rather than by names in the minutes it was all, all for by the most part we haven't number. mentioned anybody's name that i can recall i think since covid uh, i think uh i looked at last year the list is there with names and amounts yeah we always go, didn't go back but well, we didn't we'll talk about it or anything else. but we we have i think in in the past year we have done that and i, I wish now that we're televised especially that we wouldn't do that that we would talk about parcel number so as far as i can tell from reading the the supreme court decision and uh, the other document that she said there's no nothing that prevents us from uh publishing this information but i agree with her that um it's just a, a friendlier way to run the town if we don't publish it so i would recommend that you email it to us uh so that we have it to look at for the meeting and that we'd be discreet in the meetings and, and talking about it and we emails, can... emails are public information too oh yeah so so the other component of what she asked is uh that we not give it to somebody who asked for it and and i don't think we can do that no i think it's, have... my understanding is if somebody requests it yes we would be required to provide that yeah. correct mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be on the website i think her right. at least verbally when we spoke was that it's on the website mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So on the website, I mean, what Carl, what you're saying is that we should just take the names off. Can, we can leave, you know, the parcel number on and the address on, but just take the names off so that it's not automatically no. searchable. No, is my, that what my you're suggestion saying? is that we not post it at all to the website. Oh, okay. We send it out to select board members ahead of a meeting. So everything else uh, we post on the website for the meeting, but we don't post that. And then we have it in our emails to talk about it. So if somebody um, wants that information, then they would have to come to the office to get it, and that's fine. Um, Not necessarily. You can make a public records request over the phone or by email. They could, okay. they could still ask for it, but it just wouldn't be out there for everybody in the world to see. Right. I mean, that's kind of, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. But at that point, yeah. you at that point. through a process, yeah. yeah. But, but I'm a little bit confused because we've always brought a list to our meetings yes. of delinquent tax but it's only in the last few years that we've started having the material for our meetings posted on the website oh i understand that part of it. Okay. but as far as this goes ever since i've been on the select board we have a list of names absolutely and, and i'm not suggesting to change that right and that's public knowledge that can be public knowledge that can be public knowledge but, yes yeah so so we can post it to the to the website that's oh, well, I, I don't, you know the website Legal. you can go either way on that i don't really care but but if somebody asks us for that list, we still have to give it. To oh, them. I understand. Yes. It's just like we have the totals in the town report. Yeah. So, you know, we can, you know, but to your point, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean. Well, I remember years when it was by name in the, in the town report. And and like, well, if you don't want your name, name in there, better pay your taxes. Yeah. It was a deterrent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I know when I was doing minutes and I was careful to uh, refer to partial numbers, the motions. To go, even the motions to go to tax sale were made in terms of parcel numbers without the person's name, 
uh, and of course, you know, once it actually did go to, to tax sale, then all that is in the newspaper, as you say. But people the, researching records and everything else. Yeah, the idea is that um, you know, a lot of these tax sales don't go to tax sale. That the moving forward on it is enough to get the tax sale. Yeah. I don't really have a strong opinion either way. I mean, I guess if she's worked up about the fact that it's going to be on the website, I guess we could take them off. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, every town does it differently. They do. Yeah. Yeah. No, true. I don't think it's a problem on the website. It, it's a wild jump to get from a delinquent tax collector uh, to delinquent tax on someone from their name to figure out their income. Yeah. I don't get it myself. Yeah. If you had the information from the subsidy from the state, you perhaps could extrapolate their income. You would only know, you'd only be able to know if you knew exactly what their what their grand list number was and then what, what right. the actual tax tax taxability I, I, I don't, liability was. I don't see it as being such a big and deal. It doesn't make any was. sense. People aren't going to calculate that. No, no one's going to be able to figure it out unless they know the percentages. And if you just know how much they're delinquent, then you know maybe they had paid half of what they owe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 it doesn't make a difference whatsoever. They're yeah. going to be able to figure it out. Yeah, but but it's no big deal. No big deal either way, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to do it. Would you care to sign in? Sorry. Would you care to sign in? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you, what are we going to do about that? We're just going to say it's okay not to post it on the website. Yeah, do we need a specific motion? I don't, I don't think, think so, no. So. We're just no. altering We're, a process. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No problem. We will okay. stick to an email. Yeah. Um, so item D, discussion on letter in response to EMFD. It should say potential election, but that's all right. It's an election that's coming up. Or the one that just occurred. <laughs> What's that? Or the one that just occurred as well. Well, yeah, we're not talking about that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, potential executive session. Oh, What's that? No, I'm just reading. Yeah. Again, trying to figure out what I can do. Yeah. So we should go on an executive session. Okay. And what we can do is we can go to the personnel matter and then do the rest of it later, or do you want to do the rest of it now? Why we could we do, do that. Why don't we do the rest of it now and then do yeah. the executive sections back to back? That way it makes it easier. All right. Okay. So the next thing we'll just skip item D for the moment. We'll go to warrants. We have a regular expense warrant here. Yes. Not yep. very long. Not very long, I see. Uh can pass it around. We're done. This is it. Yeah. There's six items there. Okay. And, yep. and today is five twenty-three. <clears throat> and I wasn't here for the beginning. Was there, was there other business? No, no. additions. Yeah. Uh, no there's additions. a little bit of other business on the annotated agenda. Okay. We've added to the other for, for personnel. It says, I mean, administrator, we have received a nomination from the planning commission. Yes. Okay. For Tyson Brown. Yep. So my thought was we would bring Mr. Brown in to the June 6th board meeting. Yep. So I guess really the question is, you know, how would you all like to proceed with this candidate? Right, and that's um, a good question. <laughs> yeah. So we do have to come up with hours and pay, but we also have to come up with the interview process. Questions? Mm -hmm. Who's going to ask them? Right. And time. Well, we have just gone through some interviews, so we have a good basis of uh, a set of interview questions with not all of which are appropriate for zoning administrator, maybe some additional ones. But I bet if we got together half an hour ahead of time and talked about it, we could probably come up with a pretty good list of questions based on what we already have. Does that make sense? Well, we could put it on our agenda for a certain time and then um, have half an hour for that mm -hmm. rather than 
moving our meeting earlier. Yeah. We just That's schedule. Good. Yeah. And then another uh, time for the yeah. actual interview, mm -hmm. which could follow our half an hour. Right. Right. Right here. Read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we do realize that we don't have to ask a lot of questions because he's been nominated for the planning commission right yeah but we will have some questions of course yeah, yeah of course so the meeting on the six starts at 6 30 would yeah. you want to no i don't want to move it up from no 6 no i know would right. you what timing would you so what we want to do is at some point in the beginning of the meeting we want to say half an hour or so to develop the question mm -hmm. and then um, bring Mr. Brown in after that. And, want and we want, how long? 45 minutes for that? Max. Half yeah. an hour? You want to do the questions that can be developed ahead of time? Well, it'd be good if we had some sort of questions that we sure, had in, in front of us to say, oh, we want to ask this one, that one, that one. That makes yeah. it quick. Yeah. We're not going to, I don't want to sit here and we have no questions in front of us mm -hmm. to say, oh, what are we going to ask? Are we going to have a resume? <laughs> that's well, going to be with your question. Yeah, we have a resume. I mean, my, my suggestion was that we meet, uh, yeah. you said in the meeting, uh, for, a certain the meeting of time. for a certain amount of time to just come up with a question. Yeah, but we should have some questions already in front of us. Yeah, well, we, we have the LCT or start whatever. With the, yeah. or we start with the template. To your yeah. point, you've had exactly. two, two recent hires. Exactly. Yeah. So we can right. take right. a look at some of those questions. Right. We can have, you know, 20 questions on a sheet and then yeah. we can say, oh, we want you know, one, 10, and six or something. Yeah. yeah. You want to ask the planning commission to send us a list of the questions they asked? Yeah. So we're not asking yeah. the same ones. Or, or maybe so we are asking the same ones. Yeah. We might think well, they're really good ones. We will duplicate some of the questions yeah. in all fairness yeah. because yeah. it's similar yeah. <laughs> to, get, to get a feel. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of choices for ZA at this point. So, but it is good to ask some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So with the meeting starting at 6 30, would you like to start with this for that meeting? Yeah, so we can do our usual have... we can do a review of minutes, district okay. agenda, the public comment, then we can go right to okay. our list of questions. And then it, we can allow a whole hour for the whole thing. If we've got a bunch of questions in front of us, should shouldn't take us long. And then we can have Mr. Brown come in. So from 6 45 to 7 45, we can allow for the questions yeah. and having him come in. Yeah. Okay. That work? And I think in terms of open or closed meetings, when we're coming up with a question, that sounds like a closed meeting yeah. because that's yeah. personnel stuff. Right. And when it's the actual interview, I guess that's an open meeting. Is it? I don't think they were for- They weren't for anything in other no. ones we did. The interviews yeah. we did before yeah, they, they were. Closed. They were closed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that leads to better answers. Actually. Generally, you keep the view of people con confidential class. Well, that's right. Right. In case they have another job. Right. So we already have it posted on the website, uh, but um, what the, the name of the person? Oh, we did, um, and we yeah. and we and we've said it a number of times. Uh, it's okay. Here, but <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but uh, it won't go in the minutes. <laughs> okay. So I can communicate with him, maybe like a seven fifteen. Then yes. Maybe an okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. And I will email the select board. Now, the way we've done it before is we did it in yeah. person. We had the person that was being interviewed come in in person. Yes, that would be my intent. And I, yeah. that would be best. I, I mean, he was in person. I mean, the members of the select board, of course, could always Zoom in, like yes. you know, Amy yeah. is tonight. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I noticed the town manager, uh, city manager uh, candidates, the last two for Barry City, where their pictures and their names and everything were in the, in the paper. So, oh, uh, really? at least when you get down to that level. Right. It's, yeah. It's right. And this person's a finalist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So. <laughs> so I guess we're all right. I think we're fine. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. And the, the office hours, did you want to? Yeah. The, the only thing there was, we're just, uh, when I first came into the office, I was told that the listers are here from 10 to 12. Right. So you can always kind of count on having the meeting room in the afternoon. But we've yeah. had some inconsistent hours lately. Okay. We have limited space. So it made it a little difficult yeah. to get into this room, but I think that we, I talked to the listeners on Friday afternoon okay. and I've discussed it with the team because we just have, with the potential new ZA coming in, we have times where we're going to need to kind of overlap in this room. So we kind of came to an agreement that either they'll leave, the listeners may leave so we can have the, the meeting room space or, you know, we'll all 
cohabitate peacefully yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and share the space. So I just wanted to make sure you all knew that, you know, we were working through that and uh, kind of trying to balance our, our limited space accordingly. Mm -hmm. So on the hours, I think there's got to be some posted hours for the zoning administrator. Um, but Absolutely. Two, two days a week at the minimum. Yeah. Um, some of the work can be done from home, but there's got to be posted hours Absolutely. so people know what they are and they can come in and apply for permits. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what those hours should be. I think once the candidate has, has accepted the position, I think we would work through that timing. But yeah, absolutely. But I think that we do need to be up front with the candidate to say um, there are some office hours. Yes. And, and they should be a minimum of two days a week yeah. or two afternoons a week yeah. or two mornings a week, whatever. So the yeah. public knows. And then there will be some time when um, the candidate can do work at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was kind of our thought. It's funny that we've gotten to this stage where that needs to be made explicit. Yeah. Okay, if you get this job, you have to come into the office. Yeah, the office in yeah well, these days it's like <laughs> a lot of variables as far as you yeah. know, in person, out person, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the pay thing is the other thing, but that's something we really haven't fleshed out. Do we do that in open session? No, 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 right. I don't think we should. No, it's a right. negotiation. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's something that we're going to have to talk to talk to among ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Right. Um, was there anything else? That's it. Anything else that I think? likely go to executive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we have a member of the public that came in after the public comment period. Did you want to say something, John? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I was just a little concerned that <clears throat> the agenda I was on regarding the fire chief. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the first contested election. This is the third contested election. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about the fire chief? Yeah. And <clears throat> I think our department has done a very good job managing its resources and trying to make sure that we run very efficiently. And uh, anybody who's elected chief is uh, a known commodity, um, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, you served so I'm just a decade or more as chief? What's that? You served a decade or more as chief? No, five years. Five years. Okay. And I was one of the contested ones. Right. I lost by one vote. So my question is, I didn't even, I don't even know what's going on here. So it's fine. We're, we're not doing anything with Chief yeah. tonight or anything. Okay. Well, I just saw it on the agenda. Yeah. So. It's nothing to do with the Chief. Okay. Okay. So a couple of us know no more than you do about what the agenda item is actually about. Okay. But it has nothing to do with the Chief. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure because there was. Well, we don't have anything room, to do with it anyway. There was a, there was a rumor flying around that this is the first time there was. There was a what? First time there was a contested election. Oh, this time around. This oh. time around, and that is not the case. This yeah. is the third time. Well, you've got oh, a long okay. historical perspective with the department, so thank you. Yeah, forty-eight, 48 years. So. Yeah. Anyway, the, it, it, the process is what it is. Um, you know, it's a democratic process that the you know, emergency services. Department engages in as far as the election of the chief goes. Now, you know, that happened. It's history at this point. I, I you know, remember whether we're happy or not with it, it's it's history. It was a democratically right. run election. Right. Now, as far as our relationship goes with the fire department, the emergency services will have to see how that plays out. We're we're just gonna see how it goes. Right. Yeah. And, and like I said, we do have some concerns. The majority of the department didn't have uh, faith that things would be as good, if not better, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, so it was a close election. Not as close as mine was. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right. Um, it, it's whatever. Uh, and it's a small group of people, too, really. So no, there's, 20, there's 20 people at vote. <clears throat> Correct. Mm -hmm. There was 20. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So thank thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming in. Yep. All right, so let's see. So now we can, we've taken care of all other business. So now we can go in executive session. Yeah, so why, what are we gonna do in executive session? I, I don't understand.
Um, we're discussing a personnel matter um, to do with the fire department. Okay, coming out of exec, uh, executive session, no action taken. 833. 833. So um, let's continue on our, let's uh, go to item D and the potential of sending a letter over to the emergency services facility. So you got up a letter? Did you want to let us see it? I drafted something. I guess I'm not sure what exactly you all wanted to say. So okay, so, really sure what so there was concern. Was, okay, I'll, I'll just lay it out. There was concern expressed by the president of the fire station emergency services that um, there was personnel running for the seat, open seat, that might not be qualified and didn't have a skill set to uh, represent the interests of the fire department in a productive way. So that's what I got out of it. He's concerned. So I thought we should send a letter over, or he wanted us to send a letter over there to express our concern. So that, that's where I went. So I guess one question is, is the board universally concerned? And what would the board? Well, I didn't, of course, we couldn't act on anything yeah. without bringing it to the board. Right. So I'm sure couldn't send a letter. So that's why we, one of the reasons we met is come up with something to, um, or should, that's. I agree that when, uh, when the president raises questions, he's a valuable, uh, valuable person. Exactly. There, valuable right. contact that right. we, we need to take them seriously. Yeah. Um, we can, I'm not in a position to have an informed position about either of the candidates. And, and even if I, I were, it, it's a different organization. Uh, if we want to send a letter saying, you know, we, we value the ongoing cooperation between the fire department and the um, East Montpelier Select Board and the Calais Select Board. And uh, we look forward to working with a, uh, a board that is uh, going to cooperate with us. Um, that's fine with me, but that doesn't say- Well, it isn't well. just a board that's going to cooperate, it's a board that's going to run the um, operation in, yeah. in, in, a, in a safe, yeah. um, productive way. Okay. Um, and that has, and the board needs to have the skill set to steer the ship. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that, I mean, I do know all the candidates and, um, you know, there are some candidates there that wouldn't be appropriate. So I don't know what you wrote. So Jean, Jean and I did talk about this and we agreed that we should say something, but fairly innocuous. Essentially the paragraph I drafted that said, said the select board understands there's an upcoming vote to elect a new member to the MFB board. With the change of leadership in the EMFB, the select board is concerned about additional changes in future direction of the EMFB board. We encourage the EMFB to ensure those elected to the board have the necessary experience and qualifications to maintain the quality of the board going forward. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So if you all are comfortable <clears throat> with that. Yep. The question yeah. Did is, we thank them for their recent visit to the... I did. Yep. That was my first Perfect. paragraph. All right. <laughs> So I did thank for the recent yeah. visit, and I said uh, we appreciate the transparency and desire to foster a stronger relationship between the East Montpelier Select Board and the EMFB Board. Okay. So, would okay. you like this letter sent to who? The chief. To to Larry Brown. Okay. That's what um, the request was. <laughs> okay. So. so, what's actually the purpose? I mean, I I don't want to take the wind out, but what's the purpose of this? I mean, isn't it's that kind of like, hey, you know, you're going to send a letter that says that you don't want to work well with, I mean, I, I guess I, okay, whatever. <laughs> no, no, the letter, is the, the first paragraph is just window dressing. No, I understand that, but this whole, this whole letter seems like it's window dressing, but I guess if, if, if there's some intrinsic, okay, whatever. That's somebody requested it, and we can do it. I just I don't get it. I guess why okay, we so would. We're, we are also concerned about who's going to be on the board of directors. I understand that, but yeah. do you really think that they're, as an independent entity, are going to look at this vaguely worded thing and say, "Oh, yeah, you know, we should definitely go this way." I. They're, they're, going to say, they're going to say, you know, the select board never sent a letter before, before okay. an election. So this might mean something that they are concerned. Okay. It's a thought across the bow that says we're concerned. We've never done this before. We've okay. never, we've never interfered. We're not going to interfere with the election, 
But right. we're expressing our concern about the election. And okay. I, I, I personally think that's appropriate. Okay. That we do, that we are concerned. We're concerned. And when okay. there are certain personalities that um, could be on that board, it could be difficult for them to do the business in the way that they need to. Well, you know? yeah, I totally get that. I just think yeah. that they really have prided themselves on independence and I just don't really, but I, you know, I guess if you, yeah. if you want to state an opinion, then that's the way to do it. That's fine. As long as, you know, it's not so big that they can kind of, I mean, they're going to know what you're saying, I guess. Okay, fine. Well, whatever. I think I know what we're saying in that the person that asked us to say something about it, we will be satisfying what he asked us to do. And that's important that okay. we are supportive of someone that's been a strong proponent of the fire department and emergency services has done a really good job we need we need to be have him as an ally as we move forward through a process that could be problematic we don't know we hope it's okay okay but we do need um i think i i personally would express this the way we did it and it doesn't hurt okay i mean i don't think it hurts anything i guess right you know that's fine here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know any uh, people who yeah. are involved, and I think that's good. I'm glad I don't. Yes, yeah. and um, and I do have, and I do think that you know they are pretty. They're an ex separately existing corporation that mm -hmm. doesn't have to do anything we ask them to do right. in that regard. But if we're sending the letter, we're just send, sending it as a way of saying this is our concern. Yes, just want to make sure that we get the best people we can on the board. Of course, goes forward in a positive manner. Of course, that's fine. Yeah, but I don't. I just don't want it to be construed that we're trying to control what they're doing. That we're not. Right. I, okay, I so right. so so I'll push back on that. Um, mm -hmm. They are dependent on us. They're dependent on our contract. We can end the contract for sure. And but so and so to say that we're completely hands off is not the right message. We are the select board. We do control it. We have a, a contract with them that we can end. We can and, end and the contract. I'm speaking from my my own from okay. myself yep. because I don't know anybody who's being who's running for the board. I don't no, know no. any of that. Yep. No, those yep. issues or who they are, yep. what their qualifications yep. are. So it makes it harder for me to, to support something like that. But I was, so, I'm willing to do it as long as it's an innocuous kind of letter. That's why we did it though. Right. We did it. It's, it's a twofer. It's innocuous, but it still sends a message. And it doesn't tread too much on anybody's toes. Right. I would but, say half faith. What's that? I would say half faith. You'd say half what? Faith. Half faith. Faith. Have faith. The right thing will come out. I, I hope so. Um, yeah. But at, at the same time, I think we should send a message. And I don't think it's going to hurt anybody. And if they say, oh, they're interfering with our business, okay. We, we are the controlling interest here. And don't forget it. And, you know, as we move forward, we'll have to see how it goes. And that's what we decided in our last meeting. We talked about this. We're going to see how it goes, it's, which I think is fair. It's, it's hard to see anything objectionable in that letter. Why, it is. why would you object to a letter no. asking that? Uh, you know, you know, if, if I got the, the letter and I, if I was the person the letter's addressed and I got the letter, I'm like, I would say, oh, hmm. They are interested in what's going on here. Yeah. That's what that would that would be my reaction. Yeah. It's, it's essentially okay. to me what my my intent with what I wrote was to encourage what we heard from Mr. Brown at yes. the last meeting, yes. which is transparency, yeah. openness, exactly. yeah. dialogue, right. communication, yeah. his desire for us to engage more with mm -hmm. the EMFD board. Mm -hmm. That was the spirit in which I wrote the words that I did. Excellent. I, I think it's well written and I, mm -hmm. I and I, I'm full support of it. Okay. So then I will get this drafted. Does everyone so feel that way? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it going out under your signature? Is that the idea? That's sure. how I have yeah. it. Okay. Yes. So so I move to uh, authorize the chair to uh, sign the letter that uh, that uh, the town administrator has read for us tonight to the East Montpelier Fire Department. I'll second that. Can you hear us, Amy? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes have it. appear to have it. They do have it. Um, I guess that's it. That is it. Perfect. Wow. 45 minutes. We got a lot done. Sweet. <laughs> so usually, um, you'd be efficient see. when you start at eight o'clock in a meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what I thought. Be a meeting. <laughs> you can't pop it all to start at eight now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
You did? Yeah. Um, so everybody there's one more item on, on here, John. And it's usually one that you take care of. It's oh, spelled I'll, H. I make the motion we adjourn. <laughs> oh, give me a second. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.